This is Lorenzo. He fell in love with Jenna. I think my favorite thing about Jenna is her ability just to embrace who she is as a puppy. She's a puppy? Despite living a puppy dream, this canine couple have had to deal with some harsh judgment. I definitely do get a lot of hate. This person is just absolutely mental, like out of their mind. The act of acting like a puppy actually is something that is fairly well documented. And this is something that started supposedly in the BDSM community many, many, many years ago. And in general, there isn't anything technically harmful, I think, about it, but dang, it is kind of unusual. Puppy play is extremely important in my relationship. That's where a lot of like my my love languages lie. Um, I it's very important to get a lot of praise, a lot of you know, good job, you're doing great, you know, good girls. Was that seriously her barking or did they actually put that sound in? Because it sounded like a real dog. Now there is actually a condition called clinical lycanthropy. And clinical lycanthropy is the actual act of believing you are an animal like a dog. Now this term originally comes from the term lycanthropy on its own, where actually long ago humans believed that they can turn into werewolves. And this reminds me of a disturbing story back in 2016 out in Florida, like everything weird seems to happen in Florida, where a 19-year-old man was actually found on top of a 59-year-old man growling and actually eating him alive. And that man eventually died from his injuries. And it is believed that that man may have been suffering from clinical lycanthropy. I have six children. Oh, that's nice but four of them are not real. What? There we go. We love these dolls and we treat them like they're members of our family. We're the reborn family. Yeah. So they call them reborns because they are dolls and they treat them like real children? I'm not a puppet, I'm a real boy. <laughs> Now there is a condition called anthropomorphism, and this is where you basically give human qualities to inanimate objects. Children do this all the time, where let's say they have a doll that they act as if that doll is real. I do this all the time with my little puppy Tiny. I talk to Tiny and I treat Tiny as if he's a little baby, which he is. How's the morning routine changed with the reborns? Uh, Feeding six children in the morning is very hard to do. It can be quite a circus around here. <laughs> was he joking? I mean, she was laughing, so maybe he was joking and they, he actually doesn't take time to pretend feed these dolls in the morning? Please tell me he's joking. I am a mother of two amazing girls. And then, I, of course, I have my four reborn babies as well. There we go. We treat them as though they are real the whole day. Oftentimes, people will practice anthropomorphism as a way to cope with, let's say, a certain life situation. So it's possible in this situation that by treating these dolls as real humans, they're getting some type of comfort from that to deal with a potential loss or some other life situation. There's nothing necessarily dangerous about that as long as they don't slip into a sense of false reality and believe, let's say, that these dolls actually are real humans. I'm aware that they're dolls. I know they're not real, but I get into the role playing as though they're real. My favorite part of when my girls were little was when they were in that newborn stage. I wanted a way to have that all the time and that's kind of what I've found with the reborn babies is I can have that newborn forever. Now I can see this a bit. I'm a parent of two children. My kids are now in high school and there's so many times where I do miss the little babies that smelled so good and they sat on your lap and you hug them and they just were so cute and soft and cuddly. But really these are still dolls. They're not humans. Ugh. I've never really been able to open up and talk about my miscarriage. All I could think of was how much I wanted my mom and how much I wanted my baby that I just really wanted them to be with me. I'm not equipped to face such difficult pain and loss. And so for me, how I've found a way to go on is with these dolls.
Throughout our lives, we've all done some anthropomorphizing. You know, whether we are children doing that with dolls, uh, whether we do it now, like with my little dog, Tiny. Uh, and once again, these are just ways to create comfort. And I think as long as she doesn't slip into believing, obviously, that these are not real humans, and there appears to be no evidence that she's gonna do that, and so this can be potentially a coping mechanism for her to deal with a sadness and a grief and hopefully help her get past that and even hopefully get past treating these dolls as real humans. I breastfeed my husband and my child. He just likes my milk just how some people like, you know, cow's milk. He just likes my personal milk. What's going on here? I originally started breastfeeding my husband Alex on a cruise years ago. I forgot my breast pump, and at the time I was currently breastfeeding my daughter Aria. I mean, there was no other way of getting the release of milk that I needed. I mean, honestly, to each their own. Now, my wife breastfed our two babies, and breastfeeding is a beautiful thing. Not only is it a great way for mother and baby to bond, but it also gives these babies very important antibodies and helps keep them healthy and helps them to grow. I mean, it's just such a great, great thing. But I have never, ever considered drinking my wife's breast milk when she was lactating. To me, and this is me, I would not judge anybody if they want to drink somebody else's breast milk. That's your decision. I just, ew. I went home, there was no more milk. My daughter was weaned off. And then when my son was born, it started up again. So, you know, I take care. That guy is really funny. So is there any danger to drinking human breast milk? Human breast milk actually can be potentially good for you. It's got healthy fats, it's got healthy proteins, you've got antibodies from the mother, so there's nothing actually dangerous about it unless you're getting it from an unapproved source. Now, there are people who will buy breast milk online, and there was one study that found that over 90% of breast milk samples that are just bought online actually are contaminated with bacteria. It could theoretically be contaminated contaminated with bacteria that can give you horrible gastroenteritis. It could even be contaminated with HIV or syphilis. The guy loves his breast milk. So then the question is, is what happens when she stops lactating? You know, when the babies don't need it anymore? Is she gonna just lactate for the rest of her life because he likes her milk? Well, there are actually human milk banks that moms will use for human milk for their babies. And this milk is typically free of any contaminants and it's pasteurized, so it's not gonna have this bacteria that could potentially grow into it. I don't know if these human milk banks ever get calls from a guy like this to see if he can get the milk himself, but I have got to assume that they probably do. My question is if he poured a bowl of cereal, what type of milk would he put on that cereal? Gotta wonder. So this gentleman likes to drink her wife's milk, and you know what, if he does, all the more power to him. But what about a wife who likes to eat her husband's ashes? Yes, gotta take a peek at this video from My Strange Addiction, where a woman eats her husband's ashes and other people eat all sorts of just odd things. And remember, eat real food, not ashes, use clean skincare, and always auto-juvenate before you operate.